recruit, and welcome to Astroneer Academy 404 Beyond the Rift. So you've built a base, solved all the gateway engines, launched a rover or two into space, and even stepped beyond the rift. But did you really think your adventures as an astronaut are over? Far from it. Today, we are going to be taking a look at two other adventures awaiting you in the solar system. Desilo is often overlooked by many astroneers. It has some Sphalerite and Wolframite, but you can get to those easier on other planets. Since it has no atmosphere, there's also no gases to collect. As resources go, there are definitely better destinations. So you might stop by to activate its two gateway chambers and the gateway engine and then just move on. A lot of astroneers don't even bother building a base on Desilo. But if you overlook it, you would be missing one of the most special encounters available to an astroneer. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. It may take a while to find it, but the reward for doing so is one you do not want to miss. I'm talking, of course, about the Apollo Lunar Module. In every solar system, somewhere on the surface of Desilo, you can find a tribute to the 50th anniversary of mankind leaving Earth and first stepping foot onto the moon. Apollo 11 launched from Kennedy Space Center on July 16, 1969. Four days later, the Apollo Lunar Module, Eagle, touched down on the surface of the moon. Six hours after that, Neil Armstrong stepped out of the Lunar Excursion Module and uttered those famous words that echo through time. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many astroneers are not aware, but the limb was the first opportunity astroneers had to take photos. Long before the small camera and various photo capturing emotes appeared, the Apollo Lunar Module offered astroneers the opportunity to take a photo to commemorate their own discovery of this historic landmark. The filter on the Lunar Module is not available via any other camera option, making it a truly special photo to save. For those who stick around long enough after taking your photo, something almost magical happens. Actual audio recordings between Mission Control in Houston and the Apollo mission astronauts begins to play. Okay, all flight controllers, about 15 seconds to CSM hack. This is not just some short clip on a loop either. The audio runs for over an hour and 20 minutes. If you would like to hear the entire recording, I have a video that went live on July 20th that includes the entire thing completely unedited and without any of my own commentary. Once you have discovered the Apollo Lunar Module, you can return to it quite easily. As you orbit around Desilo, you will be able to see the Lunar Module's light shining on the surface. Pick a nearby landing spot and head on over any time that you want to capture a new photo or just listen to the soundtrack. Of course, personally, I like to build an outpost base near the lunar module as a place that I can go to when I want to kick back, relax, and just watch the stars and planets go by. Your discovery of the Apollo lunar module is just your first of many encounters you will have with historic space exploration. Now, you might get lucky and accidentally wander across the remaining seven objects, but it is a whole lot easier to find them with the probe scanner. You can unlock it with 4,000 bytes and print it on your backpack from one steel. Interact with the probe scanner to begin locating an historic space exploration object on every planet and moon. Each activation will consume power at a rate of 0.3 units per second, and each scan lasts 15 seconds. As it spins about, the probe scanner will pause for a moment when it is facing in the general direction that you need to head. Pay attention to the three small lights as well. As you get nearer to each object you're searching for, more lights turn on. When all three lights are on, you're close. The music from the probe scanner itself grows more intense the closer you get as well, and the scanner will pause for longer as it tries to guide you in your adventure. The probe scanner does need a cooldown after each scan, but it is best to use it as often as possible to stay on course. To make the best use of the probe scanner, consider pairing it with one of the widget slots on your backpack or on a vehicle. If you're flying about with a jetpack on one shoulder and the probe scanner on another, you can keep scanning and adjust your course as needed. Personally, I prefer to attach the probe scanner to the rear of a rover so that I can activate it and see it while I'm driving. If that rover also has a drill and paver, I can easily navigate any terrain while I search. As I've already mentioned, every planet and moon has its own historical probe to locate, so let's take a look at each one. On Silva, you will encounter the Kepler Space Telescope somewhere in one of the numerous mountainous biomes. Launched in March of 2009, Kepler's primary mission was to scan a portion of the Milky Way galaxy to discover nearby Earth-sized exoplanets orbiting their star in the so-called 
Goldilocks zone and to estimate how many stars actually have such planets. After nine years in operation, with its fuel depleted, NASA retired the Kepler on October 30th, 2018. When you locate the Kepler Space Telescope on Silva, you'll notice that there is a Tier 1 slot on it. Take your scanner and place it in that slot and get ready for a nice show. A rift in the fabric of space-time appears briefly as your scanner is consumed. That's right, you're going to need a different scanner for each and every planet and moon. When you activate your seventh probe, an Einstein-Rosen bridge appears. By the way, science nerds, an Einstein-Rosen bridge is simply another name for a wormhole. And if you truly are a science nerd, then you know that a wormhole is a theoretical structure that links two disparate points in space and time. It is theorized that wormholes could allow you to travel massive distances across space and even through time itself. Keep that theory in mind when you encounter your seventh and final historical probe. On Desilo, equip your probe scanner and start looking about the gray mountainous biome to locate the New Horizons probe. Launched in January of 2006, New Horizons was the fastest man-made object ever launched from Earth. Its primary mission was to conduct a flyby study of Pluto in 2015, with a secondary mission to fly by and study other Kuiper Belt objects. It is also only the fifth space probe ever to achieve the escape velocity necessary to leave our solar system. On Kalidor, your probe scanner will lead you to a craggy biome where you will discover the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble was launched into a low Earth orbit in 1990 and is still in operation today. Its large 2.4 meter mirror allows it to capture extremely high resolution resolution images with far lower background light than ground-based telescopes. As a result, it has captured some incredibly detailed images, giving astronomers across the globe a deep, clear view into space. The Hubble's images have led to huge breakthroughs in astrophysics, including determining the rate of the expansion of the universe. Equip a probe scanner on Visanya and it'll lead you to a mountain forest where you will encounter Voyager 2. Launched in August of 1977, it was one of two twin probes with a mission to study Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It is also the fourth of five spacecraft to achieve solar escape velocity. It made that escape on November 5th, 2018, and despite its massive distance from Earth, it remains in contact through NASA's Deep Space Network. Voyager 2 has been in continuous operation for nearly 43 years. The Mariner 10 can be found in a rocky peak biome on Novus. Launched in November of 1973, the Mariner 10 was the last spacecraft in the Mariner program. Its primary objective was to study Mercury's environment, atmosphere, surface, and body characteristics, and to make similar observations of Venus. It was also launched to conduct experiments in the interplanetary medium and to obtain experience with a dual planet gravity assist mission. It was also the first spacecraft to ever make use of the gravitational slingshot maneuver. Head to Glacio and your probe scanner will guide you to one of the several dark peak biomes where you will discover the Pioneer 1 spacecraft. Launched in October of 1958, it was the first launch for NASA. Its mission was to orbit the moon to make scientific measurements. Unfortunately, it failed to achieve lunar orbit due to a guidance error and it was destroyed as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere. Its entire flight lasted only 40 three hours and, despite its destruction, it was the most successful of the three Thor Able space probes. And finally, on Aatrox, in the inhospitable terrain of the Yellow Cavern Mountains, your probe scanner will lead you to Sputnik 1. Its launch in October of 1957 made it the first ever artificial Earth satellite. It orbited for three weeks, broadcasting radio pulses back to Earth until its batteries died. It continued on in orbit for two more months before it fell back into Earth's atmosphere. The success the of Sputnik 1 induced the American Sputnik crisis and it triggered the space race during the Cold War. There is no set order prescribed for you to discover all seven of these historical probes, but when you place a probe scanner into the seventh one, you will have an encounter with someone, possibly from another time and maybe even from another dimension. Since this is something that you really should experience for yourself, we have decided to not show you this encounter. Each historical probe you activate with a scanner will unlock a corresponding palette, and your final encounter will also unlock a new emote. We'll cover those in a bit more detail in our next course, Astroneer Academy 405. Now that you have located all seven historical probes, you think the adventure's in there? Well, 
They don't. Did you notice that each and every one of those objects emitted a unique sound? All seven historical probes have an audio loop that has two separate streams. One of those streams contains a message in Morse code, while the other contains data to form a spectrogram image. So we're going to recap all seven probes, letting you listen to their audio, while we display the translated Morse code and histogram alongside them. Now, you might be wondering who the gentleman in the final photo is, and you would not be alone. It did not take Ashton Ears very long to decode the spectrograms. In response, Adam Bromell, System Era's creative director, took to Twitter to speak about their significance. The historical probes were modeled by the late co-founder of System Era, Paul Papera. In one of his tweets, Adam said, I wanted there to be a way for Paul to have a permanent fingerprint on Ashton Ear. Not only is the final photo a self-portrait of Paul, but the Wanderer himself is inspired by Paul. Reflecting a spacesuit design from one of his favorite movies, his passion for photography, and his tendency to wear dark clothing. In fact, even Paul's height of 6 foot 5 inches led to the Wanderer being the tallest of all suits, and the Wanderer's idol animations were based upon Paul's stature and mannerisms. It is all a very touching tribute from System Era to their late co-founder and friend. While each of these adventures do not add up to a significant amount of time exploring, their historical and personal tributes bear a great deal of significance. Be certain to take the time to allow the historical and personal weight of both the Apollo Lunar Module and Wanderer Adventurers to sink in. And be sure to keep looking to the stars. In our next course, we will be taking a look at the final 18 achievements that you can unlock as an astroneer, along with a number of cosmetic items that you can unlock for a fresh new look. And in our final course, Astroneer Academy 406, we will cover topics that did not fit neatly into previous courses, discuss any corrections and updates to topics that we have already covered, and then we will wrap it all up with a very special guest as our commencement speaker. But until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vanguard. Glorious.